Hi, welcome to the Interaxis channel and Interaxis.io. We want to keep talking here about traditional finance versus uh, DeFi or decentralized finance. First, I want you to remind you, please subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube. Please check us out on Twitter at Interaxis8. Now, going back here, uh, traditional finance versus DeFi, and we want to talk about uh, one of the protocols that's out there that's relatively new called Maple Finance, uh, and what they develop is a protocol to kind of bridge this gap that, that they see there's a, a big need for, and we want to explain a little bit about that. Uh, let me say first, uh, I'm not an, an investor in Maple Finance. I, they haven't paid me for this or anything. This is just something that we feel is really important that we need to get out there. There will more than likely be other protocols similar to this, and there's a lot of bridging now between traditional finance and DeFi, but Maple's kind of out there the first, and, and I want to talk a little bit about what they're doing because this goes to all the DeFi kind of incentive structures that we've seen and how they've been able to solve some of these problems. So what Maple is trying to solve, one thing is how do we have under-collateralized lending available and then how do we bridge the gap to be able to lend money to companies, organizations, protocols, whatever it might be that uh, are in the real world or in the traditional world, uh, you know, have real cash flows, real businesses. How are we going to get DeFi money to them in a way that those companies don't have to put up 150% collateral or something? So real quickly, the, the way, uh, a couple of the way things are working right now in traditional finance versus DeFi. So in traditional finance, what you have, uh, for example, is let's say, you know, I put my money into a bank right here. And then uh, someone named, uh, we'll call her Jill, comes along, and Jill wants to borrow, has a business, and wants to borrow, say, a million dollars. My money is here. It's insured. The bank is going to make sure I have my money. But what they're going to do is they're going to underwrite. And the underwriting process just basically means they're going to vet Jill. They're going to see what her credit report is, what the business is like, what kind of cash flows it's going to produce, or it is producing already, and determine the credit worthiness. And they're going to lend money to Jill. So let's say they give her a um, million dollars, and she's going to pay back interest on this particular loan. Now, during that time, I don't really care what all the bank has done, so long as they keep my money safe. So long as when I go to get that money, uh, it's there for me, I can take it out, whether it's debit card or check, or I just walk into the bank and say, give me all my money back, please. I can do that. The bank then is this underwriting process, and if they're charging Jill, say, 6% interest, they're paying me 0.01%, they're essentially getting to pocket the rest. And, they, and they're doing that because they're keeping my money safe, and they are underwriting. They're going through this process to make sure these these people are viable candidates for debt financing. Now, let's uh, fast forward to where we are in DeFi, and, and we've talked about this before. DeFi, a lot of what it's done is it's taken that credit risk, that risk that Jill does not repay the loan, and replaced a lot of it with smart contract risk. So what has happened now is Adam deposits, uh, we'll call it ETH or USDC, into a liquidity pool. And then that liquidity pool is potentially lending money out. So if someone wants to borrow, we'll call it 1,000 uh, USDC, they might have to put up $2,000 worth of, not 2,000 ETH, but $2,000 worth of ETH as collateral. In such case that the, if, if the ETH drops below, say, $1,500 worth, they get liquidated. And that's how my money that's in this liquidity pool remains safe, is there is always more collateral than the money that's being loaned out. And because of that, if I wanted to borrow, I had to over-collateralize. Well, that doesn't work in the real world. That doesn't work in the traditional world. You can't always over-collateralize loans. A whole, the whole point of our entire world economy is under-collateralized lending. There's a lot of under-collateralized lending, but it happens with underwriting, and, and it happens with different systems. So how can meld these two systems. So this is what Maple Finance has been able to do. And here's how they've gone about doing it, is they've said, okay, there's going to be this uh, pool, and, and forgive me, for you know, Maple people, if I oversimplify this, I might not have all the technicals exactly right, but I'm trying to make it simple enough for people to understand. For the most part, this is not the guide on how to use Maple. If you want that, go to Maple Finance and, and learn from them. But overall, what they're essentially doing is they're saying we're going to have this uh, the, this you know pool of funds uh, in in Maple, and then we are going to break that out into smaller liquidity pools. And each one of these smaller liquidity pools is going to have a delegate. And this person is essentially 
uh, acting as an underwriter. This person is saying, look, I'm really good at my job. I'm good at finding companies, uh, businesses, individuals, whatever, that, are, that I can lend money to that are going to repay it. I'm good at vetting all the things that I need from a, from a business. And so I'm going to manage this liquidity pool such that we are going to have a really good rate of return. And you know, th this might be something like, I'm going to manage a, a pool that only lends to Bitcoin miners or only lends to a certain type of business. And this person, this delegate, is going to be really good at, at their job, hopefully. So some of the Maple Finance is going into this liquidity pool. So uh, let's again say Jill comes over here and needs to borrow $1 million. Or one million USDC, one million dollars, whatever it might be, the delegate is going to vet her. Say, let, let me look, let me figure out why you need it, and you are going to have to put down some sort of collateral in the form of some sort of cryptocurrency. But it might only be twenty. We'll call it fifty percent now. So now, Jill, you only have to put up say fifty percent. So call it five hundred thousand dollars worth of ETH, or or wrapped Bitcoin or whatever it might be as collateral to be able to get this loan. And you're going to have to, of course, pay back the loan over time. Now, the problem, of course, with that is where we might be worried that Jill is not going to repay the loan. There's a, quite a bit of credit risk. There's, as a matter of fact, half a million dollars worth of credit risk here. So how do we, how does Maple go about doing that? Well, this LP, there is also a staking pool. Okay, so what we need is someone to come in and take up this gap between half a million and a million so that if Jill does not repay, then the, the pool does not suffer, Maple does not suffer. So there is a staking pool. And to get involved in the staking pool, I might take my Maple tokens and my USDC tokens and I go to Balancer and I end up with Balancer pool tokens and I can deposit those into this. I, might, I know this delegate, this de this, or sorry, this delegate, this delegate does really well at his or her job and therefore I'm going to stake my tokens into this particular pool into what this delegate does. Now, if Jill does not repay because into this liquidity pool, Ron might be putting USDC directly into this pool for this delegate to lend out. Ron does not want to take as much risk as I do, or he's not willing to take as much risk. His money's being loaned out. I am willing to take a little more risk, so I'm gonna stake some of my Maple USDC into the balancer pool, put my BPT tokens into this liquidity pool, into the staking pool here, and if Jill does not repay, of course, there's half a million dollars worth of collateral, but if she doesn't repay, the staking pool is what gets burned first. So this is taking up some of a lot of this difference. So if I'm the investor, I'm thinking, what, what risk am I willing to take on this delegate's ability to do their job, to do their job as underwriting? And for that, some of the interest that gets paid when Jill is repaying this loan goes, for, goes through to me and the staking pool, it goes through to the token holders. Now, I'm also, for the time being, earning more, more Maple tokens as a reward, but the Maple token holders are getting some of this interest that's being paid into these pools. So, Ron might see this delegate and what they do and say, look, I'm willing to put money into this liquidity pool so that you can lend it out, but I'm not willing to be the first line of defense here. I just want to put my money in here and get a, a good return, a better return than I can get at the bank and know full well that these are collateralized, but these are real businesses with real cash flow. So this isn't just DeFi, pure DeFi lending. I'm not just throwing this into an Aave or Compound or something like that. This is real uh, businesses that are using this. I might be willing to go, look, I, I feel really good about this delegate. I know that there are going to be some that maybe don't repay, but I think staking is the way to go here with this particular delegate. I'm going to earn a higher rate of return because I am the first line of defense now. I'm part of that. So I'm taking up th this other, I'm part of the other half million dollars that is non-collateralized or under-collateralized. And I'm willing to take that on. And that's really how the protocol is working. They're taking different incentive structures and they're saying, look, some people want to just lend out money, but we need someone to go do the work, the underwriting work, to be able to find those companies. Some people are willing to go, look, I, I'm, I'm willing to take on a little bit more risk 
and it, which is not exactly smart contract risk because Jill is still having to re has a business and is having to repay this loan. So it's not like it's just a you know the the price the the value of this ETH goes down and bam she's liquidated. There's other factors in here. I'm taking a chance on this particular person. So it's a way that we can now lend money to real traditional businesses that have cash flows but are willing to put up some sort of digital asset as collateral now and and these delegates these people that are going out and doing actual work of of the underwriting they are going to now have access to defi capital pools what do i mean by that all i have to do there's there's not a lot of kyc aml here all i have to do is stake my tokens and put them in a particular staking pool all ron has to do is connect his wallet and put usdc into this liquidity pool it's actually relatively simple so it's not that i have to really know someone who knows someone who knows someone i don't have to have those connections all i have to do is connect my wallet and either stake tokens or provide liquidity. That's how we're migrating from traditional finance to DeFi, or that's how we're putting the two together. We're taking what we know from traditional finance. We're taking the fact that not everyone is going to want to over collateralize a loan with a whole bunch of cryptocurrency or a whole bunch of digital assets, nor are they going to have the capability to do so. But if they can put up 25% or 50% or whatever this delegate deems is appropriate, then there is a mar- there is a huge market for this and maple has been providing this protocol that allows us to be able to do this so there are going to be more and more people that are going to be delegates now because they're good at the underwriting they have connections they're going to say here's my focus and i maybe have access to those people worldwide and i can do that it may be in my geographic region it may be a certain type of investment uh, that is being made or a certain type of business so hope you enjoy this check out us uh, check out our, our please subscribe here check us out on twitter at interaxis a check out our website interaxis.io and of course check out maple finance to learn more about them hope you enjoyed this and we'll see you in the next video